Hi, Carmen. I should probably just change my blade. That's probably what's going on here. This thing is not cutting anything today. Put it in the garbage somewhere. Have some new ones. Here we go. Hi, Linnea. Linnea, you won. You have to email me your address. You won one of the prize packages, hon. Hi, Carol. Hi, Carolyn. Hi, Patty. I mailed some of you guys' cards this morning. Some of them I'm not finished yet. Um, but I did mail some of them out. Hi, Gloria. Yeah, I sent you. I pulled your name out of the drawing yesterday, and I sent you a little... A note on uh, YouTube. Here's my email address. It's nancystamps15 at gmail.com. So send me your address and tomorrow I will stop at the post office and get that out in the mail to you. I think, I don't remember which one you want. I think maybe you won one of the foiling packages. I don't want to say. I'm not sure. You'll have to watch yesterday's video. Yes, Patty. It was beautiful today. Hi, Stephanie. All right, so if you watched my little um, scrapbook.com mini haul, I got some of the cut and dry foam. And so I did have about, I don't know, 20 minutes of filming that I did, stamping all of these things out. Uh, but Leah had a little neighbor friend over and her mom came over and when she came over she called my phone and I didn't get it all in one take. So I just thought, you know, you guys don't care about the stamping part. You want to know what the results are, right? So let's let's show that today. And I'm just cu cutting different colors of my mink foil. I'm sorry, I'm not going to waste my Creative Vision stamps foil for our experiment. So we're going to use mink foil. And I think most of you guys will be okay with that. Now, there will be a special Wednesday for Creative Vision stamps. But you didn't hear that from me. You're going to hear that in my video. <laughs> Carmen, I think they have like a, a adhesive sale going on right now. And just yesterday I was saying, oh, I need some more adhesive sheets. Um, let me see here. I'm just grabbing random colors and cutting different sheets of foil here. This is, this is all cut up. Boy, that's odd. That must have been the purple we used the other day, but I don't remember cutting it like that. Let's get to foiling! Just kidding. Let me cut some more pieces. All right. I see that we have 22 people on here. Hey, Tracy! All right. I've cut some foil. All right, if you guys remember, part one was a complete fail with the foiling stamps. Um, the ink was too loosey-goosey, juicy, ooh, and we just made a huge mess. So then I came up with the bright idea of making my own stamp pad, which would have worked out perfectly fine, except they discontinued the mink paint. So <laughs> we had to go back to square one. And I said, one of the issues that I had with this from the beginning, from before Heidi even invented the stamp pad, when I was inventing my own stamp pads, was that the paper would pull up, right? So yesterday we had a wonderful solution, and the solution was to use matte-coated 
cardstock. Well, then we got these beautiful results with the distress stamps on this matte coated cardstock. So the matte coated cardstock is really nice. Um, it's uh, Rangers, Ranger Distressing brand, whatever. Well, I found an alternative that I had in my stash, and this is Marco's Paper Matte Coated Cardstock. It is available. They call it Matte Premium now. They sell it in eight and a half by 11 sheets of paper, and it's fairly inexpensive. I think a pack of 50 was like $5, so I'm definitely gonna be buying that. But this is coated, this is the same kind of coated paper but it's a lot cheaper because it's clearly not name brand. It's another company's brand. So I have been stamping out all of these little samples here, which, like I said, I did film, but you won't be able to see that. Um, and in the samples, I've stamped out this Stamplistic design, which is a stamp I've had for a while, and it's a nice red rubber stamp. Maybe I will post the video and then just link it so that you guys can see results. But I made my own, um, I cut a little square of the, the cut and dry foam, which now is not in front of me. Oh, there it is. Okay, I cut a square of this cut and dry foam, okay? And I put five milliliters of the toner on there. Now, it did not soak in right away. I used my little Joann's gift card and soaked it in, okay? What's nice is this is super light. The ink stays on top. You can pick it up and use it like an ink pad. So far, you guys will see the results, I think, are going to be pretty good. Now, I haven't foiled anything yet. I also put another five milliliters into the same stamp pad we've been using. Now remember, I can't open it. Remember, we've been using this guy for like a week. So the first time we used it, we put 15 milliliters of toner ink in there. The other day, we put five milliliters in. Well, I put another five milliliters in here. And I think because it keeps sticking to the lid, that's why it hasn't dried out yet. But I will say you do not want to pick this up and stamp with it because it continues to fall out of the stamp pad. So as far as using it like a traditional stamp pad and stamping, doesn't work. It works if you want to take the stamp to the stamp pad. And I know this because I tried it on a full size stamp. The other thing I was thinking you guys all made this comment is putting this in a baggie and kind of storing it that way. That might work too. This is a little difficult to open. Um, it is very tight, which you can see as a good or a bad thing, depending on what you're looking for. Okay. Now the difference in the sponge pads is this is more of a latex sponge pad. It is really light. The ink does seem to soak into this ink pad. Okay. You can buy three of these, uh, refills for, I think around $6, right? You can buy the cut and dry foam where the ink sits on top. So I only put five milliliters of ink in here. I did not have to start with 15 and keep adding five milliliters, so I'm already using less ink, and it has this kind of foam base, so it's a little sturdier to pick up and a little easier. And if I'm gonna throw something away, I can buy a whole sheet of this for, for the same price as buying three of these little foamy ones, then I'd rather just buy this and use less ink. Okay, so that's what I did. That's the part you guys are not seeing, okay? So I used that matte coated cardstock, and I, coat, I stamped out a couple of different images. So now let's get the foiling and see how it looks. So I'm just thinking about a way that we can get this to work at a more price-friendly budget, right? So I have my mink heating up over here. I do have it on number four. I pre-cut, like I said, as you guys came on, some of these mink sheets. So I'm going to go through and start foiling them. Now, one thing I did notice is as I let these set out to dry, I thought they were wet. They're no longer wet. They are dry. Now, some of them do look a little blobby, but I think compared to what we got the first day, these look pretty good. Now, I did write on the back, this was my homemade pad. So this was using this taking the stamp block over to it very light. This gets really juicy, by the way, so you just barely want to tap the top of it. And we got this. So let's just put some foil on here and have a go. MarcoPaper.com. I will link it for you guys. Hi, Mary. 
Well, Gloria, I was thinking of throwing it in like a little Ziploc baggie. Uh-oh, maybe cut this too thin. Um, but honestly, for the price, if I'm going to use it, I'll try it in a Ziploc baggie for a few days. And if it dries out, it's really inexpensive for me just to build another one. So both of these were stamped homemade. And you'll see there was a couple that I kind of, again, because this is a coated paper, um, some of them I smudge that has nothing to do with the ink or the paper. It has to do with me just not being careful when I'm stamping. You do want to stamp straight down and straight up. One of the things you guys will see once I get that loaded is that it does stick to the paper. So if you were using regular cardstock, you would have ripped your paper. It would have peeled off. So my first recommendation is definitely get yourself some matte coated cardstock, either the Distress brand or this Marco brand. Okay, so on this one, this is also the homemade one. Um, this little spot here is because I missed inking it. Um, but again, I think that these images came out way better than the first day. Yeah, I always buy from the stamp shows, Patty. Patty, are you going to try to come up to the Allentown stamp show at the end of the month? And I'm not doing my dusting or anything. I really just want to see how this is going to um, transfer here. Cool. That's a good idea, Mary. Like a zip, like um, um, one of those little um, Ziploc box things. I know what you're talking about. Okay, so that's those two. Now this one is the toner ink. Really not that different, except in the center, it's not as dark as the homemade one. And I noticed that with both of my samples, the the homemade one was way juicier, but look at how much cleaner our lines are. Now you can still see some blobbiness there on the outside, but our lines are much cleaner than what we got on the first day we tried this product. And I think, I, I, um, I said this the other day too, I think having the product um, kind of dry out for a day or two where it's not as um, liquidy it gets a little more set up the viscosity gets a little thicker after a day or two because it's starting to dry out really enhances that stamp pad and I'm really glad we didn't give up on this because I think a lot of us well I know I would have been like what garbage and not used it anymore so by doing all of these experiments I'm really kind of finding out what works and what doesn't work um, with this ink pad and these are uh, again red rubber stamps these are not um, photopolymer I definitely would not recommend silicone stamps I think that's just gonna make the image even worse Okay, so while those are going through, do you guys recognize this background? If you are a diehard Nancy Stamps fan and you go back, I don't know, a few years, ooh, you'll see that when I originally wanted to do the stamping image idea, this is the stamp I use. This is from Impression Obsession. And so what I finally came up with was I stamped a good impression on this back card of the stamp itself. And I scanned this into my computer and then I printed it with toner ink. And so now it's saved into my computer as this cool shamrock background. And if I print it on my laser printer with toner ink, I can run it through the mink and stamp all day long. Now, 
that seems to have been the best method I found by far. It is a little time consuming because you have to stamp it, you have to scan it, and then you have to um, have a laser printer or it's not going to work or print it on a, a copier at work, I guess. Um, this has by far been the best way, but it is, it's not easy, right? So I thought, hmm, let's just revisit this stamp and let's try to stamp it out. Well, I ran into a couple of issues, okay? So I want to show you guys those issues. The first issue is because the stamp is so large, I don't know about you guys, but generally when I have a large stamp, I take the ink pad to the stamp, okay? So what I mean by that is... I had this stuck to my mat here, to my Tim Holtz mat. I had it stuck there, and then this was fine. I could pick this up and dab in there, and if it got too globby, I kind of wiped it and stamped it some more. But the ink pad, the Heidi Swap ink pad, kept falling out of the case, so I had to hold on to the, the little pad itself here which is kind of messy because now my fingers, which are freshly manicured, got ink all over them, and I did not like that at all. So there was more control with this ink pad, but I don't think I had enough toner to make a difference. So I just want to show you guys, if you look at the stamped images, you really can't see much of a difference, but they both did not come out very well. Um, this is the Heidi Swap one, which has some blob areas and some blank areas. And then this is the homemade one, which just kind of like lifted the ink. I think if we were to use maybe a Misty or something uh, the larger to kind of restamp it, I might have had better results. But I didn't get good results with either one on the larger stamp. And I truly feel it's because I couldn't get into... Um, couldn't get into into the stamp as well because I had to take the ink pad to the stamp if that makes sense but we will run a little piece of this through and see what it looks like but I have a feeling this is going to give us that kind of you know the distressed look that we knew we were going to get oh I didn't cut enough foil yeah let me put this through one of my old one so that way if the toner transfers over I'm not going to worry about it because I really don't want to cut another piece of foil hi Marie Marissa sorry hi Melody hi Dana have a couple more left that I want to show you so on this one let me run this one through here one at a time wait your turn okay so on this one I did them both side by side I did one on the um Heidi Swap ink pad and I did one on the homemade ink pad. Now when I did my homemade ink pad, I smudged it. Like as, as I was going down, it kind of um, smeared, which I did mention in my first video that you guys didn't get to see. Um, but I noticed that when it dried, it still looks wet. Like this doesn't, uh-oh, uh-oh, we have a clog. Uh oh, I'm kind of glad that happened actually. So notice how this is no longer feeding through. It's clogged. What you have to do there is turn the machine off. Ow, it's hot. Don't do that. Um, and then you have to hold this release button with one hand and pull with the other hand. So let me do that. Dude, that was my freebie uh, embossing f folder thing. Come on, it's not even a, cr oh, it was a crusty one. Never mind. All right, so no. Crusty one, one. No, okay, never mind. Anyway, so what you're going to do is, again, it's turned off. You're going to hold this little release thing here, 
And as you hold, then you're going to pull this out. So this is now no longer usable. It is garbage. And that does happen every once in a while, unfortunately. So now we can turn our machine back on. And again, I had it on setting four. Goodbye, boss uh, transfer folder. You served us well. All right, moving on. <laughs> Um, Auntie Teresa, I would say the answer is yes and no. You can, it doesn't work very well. So what happens is the Couture Creations foil has adhesive built into it. This foil does not have adhesive built into it. So when this adhesive transfers, it only sticks to, um, it only sticks to what, what the image is here. When you use hot foils, they're going to stick to everything that gets hot. So I do not recommend it. Okay. Um, what caused that? Oh, I don't know. Just something went, the folder got stuck in there wrong, got stuck up in the rollers wrong. It happens every once in a while. Um, as I was saying with this, well, I noticed when it dried, it still had this glossy look to it. So I kept touching it. And then I remembered, so does my Sakura black jelly roll pen. So just out of curiosity, I wonder if that will foil if we use it. Because wouldn't that be a cool find? So I'm going to put this piece of foil over this and send this through, which is why I bought new folders. That was an old crusty folder. So that's why I try when I'm rolling things through there to make sure nothing's sticking out the edge. Make sure that the folded side goes in first. Uh, make sure you're holding it even. Now that one was probably my fault too because I was pushing in the second folder as the first one was coming out and I didn't wait for the first one to completely clear the mink. So that's probably why it happened. That was my own impatience coming back to bite me. Okay, here I took some words. Now these are different size fonts words from this Picket Fence Studios stamp set. And you'll notice on the smaller words, this is the Heidi Swapping Pad. It got really blobby. And it just didn't want to come out. Now, on the homemade stamp pad, they came out a little better. They're still a little blobby. But when I went to a larger font, I got much better on the Heidi Swap pad because it didn't, it, again, it's drying out. So I didn't get as much ink than the homemade pad. So you can use um, font stamp, stamps. I, I did on purpose this kind of scripty font because of, of how close everything was. Um, I don't know that I would recommend that, but I know a lot of us are going to want to use this at Christmas time with Christmas fonts. So we'll see how it turns out. Okay, and then the last one here is I went and got some solid images. These are from a Hero Arts kit, and they're solid little elephants. And the homemade pad just got way too ink too inky. So you can see as I did it once and twice, there was a lot of bubbles in the pad, and it got really inky. And this is a stamped off. So I stamped from here to here, and it came out a little better. The Heidi Swap pad did do better on this, but again, we still have some of that blobbiness around the edging. Um, it's not as thick, but it's still not a perfect image. So I would, I always suspected that solid images would not work out too well with this. But again, we'll see how they look when they are foiled. And we can start revealing here in just a second. Oh yeah, the folders are way better and they're on sale at scrapbook.com right now. You can get a little two pack for under $3. And the, the two that I just used are the two I just opened up in my haul video. So the two little six by six, they're under three bucks. They come like this. I'll link them for you. If you, um, if you go in my videos from the other day, I already have them linked. Um, but there's two in there, and it's under three bucks, and they're already cut to six by six. 
Yeah, I just like the filled folders because they are sturdy. Some of these I've had since the beginning, like years and years and years ago. And all I do is just clean them with some acetone every once in a while to get the extra foil and toner off of them. And every once in a while you lose one like I just did. But um, I took big ones and cut them down to smaller size ones. But yeah, I definitely recommend these. They, they kind of keep everything pretty straight as it goes through. And the paper, when you use parchment paper and all that stuff, um, you know, you got to throw that away eventually. It doesn't hold up. All right, so I'm going to move the mink out of the way. I'm going to move all my little folders out of the way. Again, I cannot stress enough to allow your images to completely cool. As exciting as it is to want to reveal it, let it completely cool before you reveal it. So here's our messed up one. Um, yeah, we're just not even going to look at that one. Well, where the mink machine didn't eat it, it actually foiled okay. It's not great, but it's okay. It's way better than past foilings I've had with, like, embossing powders and things. Okay, we're going to throw that one in the trash. Here's the other one. So just as I suspected, a very distressed look. Um, just because it's hard to get good coverage on such a large stamp. The stamp pad falls out, and the little homemade one was just not inky enough. Okay. Oh, well, that's interesting. Well, 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 well. Okay. So, I wasn't sure if this was going to happen or not. So, what happened, and I know it's hard for you guys to see... Where the stamp slid, the upper ridges where all the blobbiness is got foiled. And the flat parts that were left behind did not get foil. You can foil a Sakura black jelly roll pen. Hey, we learned something today. Look at that. The Sakura jelly roll pen foiled beautifully. Um, same thing on this one. Even though this is the Heidi Swap ink pad, it's stamped visibly beautifully. There's a lot of missed places there. I can see the gray toner ink, but there is no foiling on them. Interesting. Interesting indeed. Okay. This is the toner ink pad. Man, I'm really kind of bummed out right now. Oh, I thought these are going to come out so well. Here is a perfect example. Right here, watch when the, when the light hits, the bottom petal of this flower. Do you see that it is not foiled? Can you see the foil skipping over there? So, this is like 50% foiled. Even on this one, there's a lot of missed spots. And I know you guys can't see because the light, you can't. Hold it up to the light. There we go. So there's a lot that's black from being inked, but there is no foil on there. Not enough adhesion to get the foil to stick. Ah, oh, that's kind of a bummer. I was surprised in the Jelly Roll ink, too. Okay, this is the little fonts. Yeah, they didn't work out. Same kind of problem. There's just not enough... A toner ink for the foil to stick to. It sticks to some spots, but it doesn't stick to all of the spots. Oh, I was all excited that this was going to work, you guys. <laughs> Same thing. It is foiled where there was thicker. So wherever it was blackest, wherever that toner was the blackest, it is foiled. But anywhere where there was kind of a valley. I mean, these still look cool if you wanted to color them. If you look at them straight on, they just look like they're black stamped. And then as soon as the light hits it, it turns purple. So it's kind of almost like an iridescent look. It's, it's kind of like an um, optical illusion. You don't know that it's foiled. The foiling doesn't come straight out at you. Okay, let's keep going here. Okay, this was the homemade ink pad. All right, a little bit better results here. 
Nope, this was the toner ink one too. For whatever reason, the, this one, the majority of it, and then these two little petals are not foiled. This one, the majority of it's foiled, and this little guy right here is not. Ugh. Let me see here. Yeah, we can take a look at the waste foil. Can you guys see how it missed? I'm trying to hit the light onto the, the okay, there we go. See that top left one? See how most of it's foiled? And then there's these couple spots over here that didn't get foiled. I tried the embossing powder. It doesn't work. The embossing powder gives you these bumpy ridges. Um, you have to be super fast at um, kind of getting everything done, just like the heat and stick powder. And this is the homemade pad. So the... I haven't found anything that works other than scanning it, printing it, and doing it that way. Um, same kind of issue here. Along the out, it's like an outline foil. That's what I'll say it is. It's an outline foil. I mean, they still look, I'll still cut these out and use them. It's an outline foil. Yeah. But it's just not what we were looking for. All right, these didn't come out too bad. Eh, besides my dust spots. Oh, that's from the bubbles in the stamp pad. That's right. I kind of knew that we weren't going to have perfect results with solid images, though. I mean, these came out better than the first images we stamped out. But there's a lot of bubbly areas because of where the ink was bubbled up on the stamp pad. So in looking at some of these, you can see on the, the waste foil, you can see where that waste foil, see, see the spots where the foil didn't release? So again, it's giving us that distressed look. See, same thing here. They look okay, Pam, but I was really hoping for a solid foil. See how it's like the outlines are foiled? It's not, it's the toner pad. There's not enough adhesion for the toner pad. I guarantee if I go and scan this image in onto my computer, if I scan it into the computer and print it on the laser printer, it'll come out much better. We're like back to square one. I'm bummed. <laughs> now, someone said Heidi Swap came out with some new, new media paste. I've not seen it or got my hands on it yet. I'm wondering if the new media paste is the same as the old mink paint that no longer exists. Maybe a little thicker in consistency. So I want to try making my own stamp pad with that. I can try making the stamp pad with the spray on. Um, what do you call it? All right, so here's the issue I had. The reactive mist is way too thin. I mean, this is a straight up liquid. Way too thin, soaks into the ink pad too quickly doesn't stick to the stamp well because it's way too liquidy, all right? Great for doing mists and mixed media and all that stuff, fine. This is the reactive screen ink, and this is like a paint. This is very thick, um, possibly could work. It's a little thicker, probably have to be brayered on is my guess. This was the perfect consistency, but they stopped selling it. So I'm wondering with their new mixed media, if it's this stuff, but maybe a little thicker consistency. Have you tried the Heidi Swap marker? I do have the Anna Griffin toner paint, but I have never tried it. 
Um, yeah, it's the same stuff. Um, hold on. Hold, please. I do have one in front of me. Here we go. So this is the mink marker. Same thing. Let me grab my... So I think we made a couple of breakthroughs. Number one, we know that paper matters. Paper, 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 paper matters, okay? Number two, the type of image matters. We want to make sure we're using an image. I, I still believe that the distressed images come out better because you're really not expecting for it to look super great. When you have solid images or solid line images, they're just not as good. These thinner line images work much better. I mean, these came out pretty good. And I think the third breakthrough is you want to make sure that ink pad is kind of like a day, like sitting with that ink in it, that toner in it. Um, and we found out that the Jelly Roll pen can be foiled. Oh, this is so brand new. I haven't even activated it yet. Do I have an activated one? Hold, please. Oh, that's good. I just have a blade sticking up. Cut myself with that. That's great, Nance. Genius. not facing up now here's an Anna Griffin one hey it's still juicy so let me grab I'm going to stamp it on the back of this I wonder how much working time we have with this and how much do you actually want to sit down and color in the image? I mean, great for something small. Definitely not gonna do a larger stamp with this or a background with this. Let's just see how that works out. Oops, missed the spot. That's regular embossing powder. He actually even tells you that in the video if you watch it. He says he doesn't really recommend it with stamping, that it's going to give you kind of a distressed look. Um, it's just super fine embossing powder. It's just super, super fine, that's all. So that gave us a more solid look. Let's see if we can... The only thing is, it like it has the brush lines in there. Like you can tell, I colored it with a marker. Yeah, the leaves came out way better than I expected. But again, I didn't have any expectations because I just figured, well, they're distressed leaves; they're not supposed to look perfect. We want to get this stamp pad to work. And like I said, I have old videos. I mean, really old videos showing me trying to get stamp pad foiling to work. Oops, my elephant stuck to my thing. Eh, clean that up later. That worked a lot better than the stamp pad did. See how solid that is? Look at how solid that foiling is. Can you see that? Bye, Tracy. No, people are leaving. 
Do you see how much more solid that is versus this? This is an outline. So I mean that works if you have smaller stamps, but how do we get what's in here into a stamp pad? It's the same company. This doesn't dry out because it's inside this barrel. You have a cap on it, so it keeps it in place. Now I'm not gonna color all of my pens with that. Unless we get this super saturated. Oh, see, now it's starting to dry out because from it was sitting there. Now we're not getting any of that ink up. It was really juicy earlier. But now that it's soaked into the pad, now I only put five milliliters in here. Let's put some more in here. Why not? We're already here. It's a mink pen. They sell it. It's a toner ink marker. nice and juicy. So this is what first part of my video was supposed to be until I got interrupted by little kids. Leah. Oops. Just rubbed it off. I'm trying to make sure it's fully coated because there's some bare spots and there's some sticky spots. All right, let's see what we get here. This is basically all I did before. And then you want to stamp straight down. Try not to smudge it. Now listen, you guys hear that? How sticky that is? If this were regular paper, it would have ripped off a layer of paper. And it stamps beautifully. You would think, oh, it's gonna foil everywhere that there's a line, but it doesn't. It skip foils it. I'm gonna turn the heat up to five. See if that makes a difference. I doubt it though. And then if I go back over to this guy, Mr. Sticky Pad over here. And I did put more in here. I put ink in both of them. I'm just gonna wipe this real quick. This is all dried out now too. Ugh. Oh, the, if you foil it before it's completely dried, the ink just gets smushed underneath and you get nothing. You get blobby mess. You get smudges. Um, Pam, I would say just wait until Wednesday. <laughs> What about using the Tim Holtz blender brush and putting the toner ink marker into the pad and try dabbing it on the stamp? What's the blending brush? You mean that alcohol marker brush? Hold on. You didn't hear that from me. Just, you know, kind of just, just wait until Wednesday. You might have to have to have it more than anything else. <laughs> uh, 
All right, this isn't gonna stamp so well because it's just not juicy enough. It's too dry. I think I know what you're talking about, Carolyn. Hold on. See how sticky and dry that is? If you use that on regular paper, your paper is gonna rip off. That's why we gotta have good paper. So paper's part of it. She should have sold some matte paper with this. Yeah, that's not gonna foil too well. I think this is getting a little sticky icky here. Um, you're talking about this guy. If we fill this guy with toner, or just dip it into the toner. <laughs> like hold on I have a blending brush like one of these blending brushes this one's all dried up oh see that looks wet it's not wet it's dry Oh, it's kind of crusty. It's not going to work. Oh, I know what you're talking about now. Hold on. Well, they're kind of too soft, but we'll try them. We'll try anything at this point. I'm also going to grab a brayer and we're going to try that too because we have nothing left to lose at this point. Give me one of these guys. Hey, you guys. One of these guys. All right, let me grab a brayer too because I know you guys have been asking for the brayer and I've been putting it off. Alright, so, since we're going to get into some deep dive dirty stuff here. You know, I'm still in work clothes, people. <laughs> okay. I'm going to bring this little tray over that comes as the lid to the little thing there. Leah, I need you to cut some foil for me. What do you want me to cut it like? I don't know, just some square pieces of foil. Um. Hmm? I'll cut it. Here's some scissors. There's the foil. Right here? Yep. Of each one? No, nah, just like a few. And you're going to cut them about this big. So, uh, so up. Use this one to cut around. Yeah, so you can just like. Oh, let me shut off my computer. I think it's fine. Like this. Like this. Yeah. And you just, and cut, around just cut straight and then cut like that. Okay. Can you do that? Yeah. Don't cut your finger off. Okay. Try not. To cut. Okay. My little baby's sick. She's been sick for a couple days. She had a um, a cough. It was like a dry cough. And don't say coronavirus because we've been making fun of her all week with that. But it was like a dry cough, and now she's got like. A head cold. Ugh. Okay, so we're going to take some more of our toner here. All right. How much testing who did? Me? I've done a lot of testing on this. I mean, we're almost out of this whole bottle already. Marker ink and a disposable face. Miss Leah, allergies. 
Oh, Heidi. Oh, I don't know. All right. This is what I'm thinking. You guys tell me if you agree or not. I want to pour some of this into this little plastic tray here. And then we can brayer some of it and try to brayer. Look at that. Fits it perfectly in there. We'll brayer that over the stamp. And then after we brayer it, we can use our little spongy dauber to clean it up and then try to um, stamp again. How does that sound? Yeah. What? You can't. You don't have a voice. You haven't been watching all these experiments. can't see through the bottle to see how much is in there, but we've used quite a bit of it. I'm waiting for them to send me a nasty email because I my video showed it didn't work. <laughs> I'm really afraid of that. I'm having like crafter's companion deja vu here. Cease and desist your videos. All right, here we go. Ooh. Ah, so very satisfying. All right, what? because it's a slick surface. Oh, that what do they call that when the that? people do printing? I guess that's what it's called, printing, right? What it's black that? ink. Oh, it stinks. Get back. You can't be breathing this in. Oh, my God, that smells bad. Don't do this, guys. It stinks. I don't smell anything because I know you. Woo, hoo, 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 that smells. I probably put way too much down. Oops. I think I might have smudged a little there. Bad mama. Uh, way too gooey. Let me try that again. I'm going to switch to the other stamp. Please have a good stamp scrubby when you're doing this because this is some sticky, sticky stuff and it gets all in your stamps. Said I haven't used this stamp scrubby in years, and now because of this toner ink, I've had to use it every day. I'm gonna try this other stamp, which came in the same collection. I'm gonna move some of this ink out of the way so we have a little less of it, hopefully. Like I know. It's what foiling does. That's why I gave you like four different colors to choose from. But it, it's not working. Ugh. Okay, I'm getting the same results we got the first time we tried, which is just too much. And it's probably because this is the fresh toner liquid again. It's just too liquidy, and it's getting in and getting all goopy. Let's try the little spongy thingy. Sponge dauber thingy. I can't even think of your own name. My name is Nancy. What's your name? Like the name of the thingy. I, I literally like game plan, like things to try. You guys have been emailing me. You guys have been sending me comments. And I've tried almost everything. And then people come up with, well, how about try embossing powder? How about try... Guys, those things have all been tried. Believe me, you can go back and look at Nancy's old videos and check them out. All right, so this is giving me... If I, maybe if I don't sponge it so much, if I kind of wipe instead of dab. When I dab, I get those bubbles, and that's the problem I had before. So maybe if I gently. A little bit more even with the ink. That looks pretty good. That looks really solid. Let's do another one. Why do you say it like that? Why do you say like solid? Because the image is printed solid. We want to have dark black lines. The blacker it is, the better it will show on the foil. That means more adhesion. That means more foil. All right, you only need to cut like three pieces, homie. This is not working. The scissors got 
Oh my gosh, you're not my daughter. I, I disown you as the foiling daughter. You're, you're kicked out of the foiling club. Whoa, what are you doing? Foil mutilator. We gotta send you back to foiling school. Not your fault. It is the scissors. Because they're too big on my hand. I should have. Oh, you cut mine. that too? Yeah. Oh, good job. I should have. Good job, mine. foiling assistant. Good job. <coughs> Ew. Get your coronavirus away from me. <laughs> Thank goodness my kids have thick skin. That looks pretty good. Could the answer have been so simple all along? I'm going to write down here uh, distress applicator. And over here, that was just regular stamp pad. This was the brayer, globby. Sometimes you have to do these experiments because in six months, when we pull this out for Christmas, we're all gonna forget what we did here. <laughs> we need these little sample cards to show us. All right, let me get this out of the way and we'll foil them. I think that's probably what it is. Um, because I can control how much is going on or off versus using the actual stamp pad. And the stamp pad is kind of irregular because think about it. It's based on human interaction of putting that ink on. Like, I don't know where that ink is going in an exact formation where if I'm using the dauber, it's pretty evenly picking that up, right? Because it's a small surface where using the ink pad or the sponge, like there's a whole bunch in the middle now, but when you go to stamp with this, that means the middle gets saturated and the outside doesn't, or the outside gets saturated. Wherever you poured that ink, you can't possibly pour that ink evenly on all the surfaces unless you dump this in there and start sopping it up that way. Does that make sense? All right, so we're gonna give these a second to dry off. Let me kind of move some of these things out of the way. It's not a complete fail. It's just not a complete success yet either. We did make some breakthroughs with using finding the right paper to use because imagine if we had stamped these over and over and over again and then fail, 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 and here it was the paper, not the ink. Um, did you use your mist with the dopper application too? You want me to try the mink mist? Sure, we can try that. I never did that before. Let me just move all of this stuff out of the way. We're going to let that sit over there and dry. We can certainly try it. Let me grab the mist. Let me grab this little tray here. We'll use this as our little uh, Uh, most likely, I'm gonna sop it up with this guy and see if I can put it in a little Ziploc bag and see if it holds it in. I'm going to pour a little bit of this in here. Now, I did make my own ink pad with this stuff, and it ooh, dries hard as a rock. It does not take long.
you know, I'm going to say, oh, the mist. Oh. oh, well, we'll try this and then we'll go to the misty. Good idea. Um, I think they knew because if you look at the videos, there's not a whole bunch of videos from Creativation. There's just a few videos. None of the videos are really close up. They're really quick with how they kind of explain it. And if you'll remember, this video was supposed, or the product was supposed to launch the middle of February, and it didn't come until the end of February, beginning of March. There are no vid other videos online that I've seen, except for my videos, of anybody else trying this product out and having any success with it. So I think they knew it was kind of like, let's put it out there, let's see um, how many people are interested in it, um, because I'm sure they sold a lot of them. So I think they knew that it wasn't perfect. Yeah, this is just too liquidy. If she can bring the mink paint back, that's gonna work perfect. This is just too liquidy. Yeah, I'm gonna get the big, I'll get the, my big uh, Misty out and we'll see how it works. Same thing, the stamp is pushing, the stamp is pushing that liquid out of the way. us that outline image yeah toner version part part two and everybody who bought part one should get their money back i bought two of them i bought two because i was hoping it was going to work and i could give one away wow well, i'm not going to do that now um okay so let's use this guy mr shamrock tried and true let me grab big mama misty here I love you guys and I don't want anybody to spend any money if it doesn't work and if it works you know I want it to work because I want us to have foiling stamped images we all want that all right I just have a pet piece of black cardstock down there that will collect any of my mistakes let me put a piece of our matte cardstock down. Let me put a piece of, I don't have sticky grit on there. Oh, here we go. Laminated with sticky grit, can't go wrong. All right, so. What you guys are suggesting is I take this and dauber it on, correct? Because we've had better luck with the dauber than we have with the brayer. Ew, the brayer's all dried up now. That's done. I have to go clean that up. Oh, this is starting to, this is hardening already and drying out. Okay, we don't have a lot of working time with this. Oops, let's put it where the paper is, Nance. Well, you don't have to worry about me throwing it away because it's all dried up. Need more product. More product! I'm just going to do this little area here. We'll see how it comes out. It's all dried out. Here's my, my tray. It's all dried up. Aw, thanks, Mary. Don't forget my thumbs up. <laughs> There's 
15 thumbs up, 59 people watching. We have been here for over an hour. Sticky, sticky stuff. Ah, oh, thanks, Renee. Nope. Same issue, not full coverage. I'm not even going to waste my time foiling that because that is not going to come out. What I am going to do is clean it up and try that with the other stuff. I attempt to clean it out. try the mink stuff with this. <laughs> Thanks, Mary. Thanks, Chow. Ooh, six more thumbs up. It only cleans off if you scrub it. I sprayed spray uh, Hero Arts cleaner on there. All right, another piece of paper. I'm doing this. Uh, this is starting to dry up too already. Inches is more than enough for card making. Other things in life, eh, I don't know. But for card making, it's a mink, yeah. If you want to do, um, uh, Pamela, I was thinking of that as well. If you want to do um, scrapbooking, then you need the 12 inches. Six inches is more than enough. And I keep trying to keep an eye on the Amazon site for it to go back down to $40. Scrapbook.com has it for $69. Um, but I will look at everything up. Oh my gosh, this is going to come up. Oh, uh, what did I say was going to happen if we used regular paper? You guys, look at what it is. Not working. All right, everybody has to donate so I can buy a new shamrock stamp. And this is what happened last time I used the mist. <laughs> Better me than you guys. That is going in the garbage. Uh, this is an impression obsession background. If you go to the stamp shows, impression obsession usually has a. Um, they usually have a um, special show special. All right, my little scrubby. Oh yeah, I use this. This is a little scrubby from. Close to my heart, best thing I ever bought. It's a hard little brush that gets in there and gets all that stuff off of there. All right, we're not giving up yet. We're already halfway there, more than halfway there. Where do you live, Pam? I linked three, four shows. Stamp Scrap Art Tour, Scrapbook Expo, Creating Keepsakes, and Heirloom Rubber Stamp Show. No, don't worry, guys. Um, I see 23 thumbs up. San Antonio, Texas. Oh, my aunt lives in San Antonio, Texas. Um, aunt Anne. Um, 
What about stamping with the embossing ink pad, then pouring toner powder over it? What? What about stamping with the embossing ink pad, and then pouring toner powder? You mean embossing powder? Yeah, I know. And there's nothing close to you, Pam. Like, everything's going to be like a two-hour drive for you. If you go on my Facebook page, Pam, I linked all of the um, shows so you can check the dates. Oh, um, that's not... Um, Trees, I'm not going to do that because toner powder is not good for... I mean, you guys noticed when I, when I put this down what kind of a smell I got. Toner powder is not to be touched and definitely not to be inhaled. That's why she came up with this product uh, because that's just too dangerous to do. I am going to try the mink paint with the dauber. We're already here. If you go on my Facebook page, D, it's Nancy Stamps 15. Um, I listed four shows a couple days ago. And at the very top is the actual link for the shows. Yeah, it's toxic. Um, if you go at the very top is the link for the shows and you can um, check the dates in your area. Like I go, the one closest to me is literally in my backyard in Allentown. That's at the end of March. But I will drive to York or Delaware or New Jersey. Um, you know, and sometimes it's an hour drive. Maryland, it's, sometimes it's a three hour drive. Just depends on how much you're willing to go. And I just, this is my thing, so I always want to go. Okay, I just poured the mink paint in this little dauber. I'm using that same dauber that we were using with the mink stuff. See, this is a paint, so right away it gets kind of thick. She thick. Yes, I am. Thank you very much. We'll see if this works any better. Um, and I did think about mixing the liquid toner with the paint, but then that kind of defeats the purpose because now you're spending more money to buy two products. I don't want to do that. Sorry, this is called screen ink. It's not called the paint. It's called the ink. And it is available in stores because I see it at Joann's all the time. I also have our embossing paste, but that's really thick. Yeah, heat and stick didn't work. Embossing powder didn't work. I'm telling you guys, I tried everything. Oh. Okay, let's just agree that the mink products are too sticky. The mink ink and the mink paint, I mean the mink uh, spritz is too sticky. This probably is not going to leave an impression. We'll try it. All right, since I already have the stuff out, Maybe we can all write a letter to Heidi Swap and make her bring this stuff back. Let's just try it. We're already here. Let's lob that in there with that stuff, too. Of course, I really wanted to make an ink pad out of it. Now, see, that's just the right consistency. It's not too thick. It's not too watery. It might be too sticky. We'll find out in a minute. I'm sorry, Sherry. I know, I said that's why I'm trying to get it to work because so many of us have already invested in purchasing it. I wanted to see if I could get it to work. I did get it to work on the Distress Leaves, so, I mean, there is a positive view if you like the Distress look, but we're trying to get this solid line look to work. We don't want everything distressed. Hi, 
Shirley. I don't know, Sherry. I think it depends on where you purchased it from. Okay, well, that released a lot easier. I want to write down what I did here. This was the, the one we did earlier was the mink, the white stuff. The mink ink. Just going to write ink on here. And then this one is the mink paint, which is discontinued. Okay, let's foil these bad boys. Okay, I'm going to clean up my stamp really good. It is really stuck on there. Ugh. Where's my brush? I know, Marissa, right? We want perfect foiling. These were part of the FSC, Foiling Snobs Club. Foiling Connoisseurs. Sorry about taking so long to clean it up, but I do not want my stamps getting ruined on experiments here. All right, let's foil these couple pieces, and then I think I must put Miss Lee in a bed. This is my makeshift, um, what do you call that? Wreath builder, because I was didn't want to buy one if I didn't like it. I think I used it a whole one time. Okay. My assistant did a lovely job at cutting up some foil for us. I have no idea where the foil went now. <laughs> rolled up behind the mink. Okay. A couple pieces anyway. Let me put stuff away. Yeah, close to my heart scrubber. I I am not a close to my heart rep and soon I won't be a stampin up rep either. <laughs> okay. I'm just trying to make room here so we can bring Misty, I mean, uh, Mink, Mini Mink back into the view here. All right, can you guys see? And I put it on five, and it's been sitting there heating up on five. In fact, we should probably hurry up because it'll probably shut down soon. All right, so this is the one we brayered, which is going to come out all globby. I don't even know if I want to waste a piece of foil on that. Let's try this one. This was using... Um, the brayer on the mist. I mean the, not the brayer, the sponge dauber on the stamping mist, which is fine for small images, not so good on background images. Once it gets that airlock in there, you're not going to break that open. It's like shut down. All right, here was, oh yeah, this was the distress applicator too. Mink is making some weird noises here. You hear it? Looks like a train. Maybe it's good I bought a backup one. <laughs> okay, 
This is the screen ink and the screen paint. Let's try these two. You foil mutilator. Good thing I didn't give you my good Creative Vision stamps foil. just put the new one back in the box and put it in the closet because there's really no reason for me to have two of them out. I mean, unless this one shuts down. I bought the new one just as a backup in case something happens to this one or in case my friends come over. If anybody wants to come over, let me know. Patty, you're only like an hour and a half from me. Plus, I like that I foiled my name on it. There's nobody snatching my videos. I will say, once you use these products, they must go in the trash. You cannot save them. They will dry out. Do not attempt to save them. I will probably put this in a little plastic baggie, but I don't expect it to turn out, honestly. Um, but like those little foam dauber pads, I mean, I just threw them out. This little tray I'll take upstairs and I'll scrub it out. Okay, let's see what we got here. Foiling, so you can continually foiling. The fo yeah, that's right. <laughs> the infinite infinity of foiling. All right, this came out a little better. We definitely have more solid lines on this image with the distress applicator. So it came out a little better. Can you see that when the light hits it? It's not as outlined. So using the distress applicator gave us a little bit better coverage. Still though, when you're looking at it straight on, you cannot tell it's foiled. So I don't know what your taste is in foiling, but I like looking at it and knowing it's foiled. I don't like this optical illusion where I'm like, oh, it's foiled? I never would have known. And I've tried all kinds of different stamps. Okay, here we did the applicator with the ink. That's um, the, the white stuff. That's this stuff, the little one. Very distressed looking. Did not give us solid coverage. I kind of suspected that was going to happen. Does not pass our standards. Okay, moving on. This is the... What is this? Oh, this was using the um, mist with the dauber, right? Wasn't it? Yeah, this was using the clear mist with the dauber. So this was using this with the dauber. And I mean, it pretty much looks the same as everything else we've been foiling today. So I don't see any advantage. If anything, it's a disadvantage because it's kind of globby in some places. And that's because it's really liquidy but it did not give us any better coverage. Um, I would say that's a no. We were better off with the regular toner ink. This is the discontinued paint. Same thing, although it worked out better than I thought it was gonna work out. Um, has pretty good coverage. It's still very distressed looking. 
but it came out better than the other one did in terms of being even. Like here you can see where there's solid areas and like not foiled areas. On here it is pretty even. I'm wondering if I used more product, but it really doesn't matter because it's sold out. So I don't want to go into this, which is what I did the whole first video. And then we find out we can make it work and then it sells out. My original idea was to take one of these cut and dry foam pads and put that stuff in there and they it's they don't have it anymore so there's really no point in doing it but that actually has some potential so i don't know i would say we're back to square one it we we did make some progress today because we found out that the sakura jelly roll pen is foilable um, but we found out that we're just not getting a dark enough solid image with the toner ink to foil completely. We have like 90% foilage here. We don't have 100% foil, um, which is so frustrating because we're so close. I'm wondering if a thicker formula would help that. I don't know. That would be up to the scientists to figure out. I don't think more pressure would help. I don't think more heat would help. Um, I think it's the formula of this stuff of how do you get it a little thicker and get it so that it doesn't dry out right away. You know what you do? You mix a little bit of it with this stuff is what you do. That's what she should have done. Because this stuff work, this stuff is the right viscosity and it doesn't dry out too quickly. But I bet if you mix this with the toner, it'll be more solid of an image. But she discontinued it. So I would say number one, good paper makes a difference. We definitely found that out. The good paper made a huge difference. And if you use a dauber on it, that seems to work pretty successfully, just depending on the lines of your image. I still think my favorite way is what we did the other night in using the distress foils. I don't know why, but these just came out so much better. They really did. These, these came out flawless. I mean, they stamped beautifully. But again, it's because there are irregularities in the stamps that there's some areas that could be blobby and it doesn't matter. There's some areas where it could have missed and it doesn't matter because it already has that distressed look. We don't have any expectations of being the, of being crisp. So um, you can get it to work, but it's going to, number one, make sure you have the good paper. And number two, you have to have a specific stamp set that it's going to work with. These thicker lines, it's not going to work with. And solid images is definitely not going to work with, so... Back to square one. I'll have to brainstorm some more ideas for you guys. I can't put my finger on what the smell is, but it's definitely a toxic kind of smell. Like, as soon as it came out and Leah was standing behind me, like, I was like, yeah, you can't be standing here. Maybe it smells like toner. Maybe that's what it smells like. It's definitely a smell I've smelled before, and it's not a good smell. Definitely something that'll give you a headache. Right, Marissa, exactly. Exactly. Okay, guys, I'm going to clean up this mess and call it a night. Um, tomorrow night, there's going to be a special kind of video. Maybe late tomorrow night. You won't be able to do anything until Wednesday. Yeah, stop smelling it. Wednesday, I would say there's going to be a very special video for some of my foiling friends. <laughs> um, but you'll have to wait till Wednesday. I'm not allowed to say. <laughs> okay, guys. And no, it's not. I figured out the stamping ink. Wednesday, there's a lot of videos going up. There's uh, Wednesday night will be Blue Night Rubber Stamps. There's a Mod Squad Challenge. 
Thursday is the Not Too Shabby release. So we got a lot of good stuff coming up this week. So save your pennies. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. I see 33 thumbs up. Thank you guys for hanging out with me for the last hour and a half while we experimented. I'm going to go clean up my big old mess here. This is already dry. I don't even need to do anything with that. Um, yeah, have a good night, and I will see you guys later. Bye. Bye. Uh, I don't know. You'll, you'll get notifications, Rena. If you click the little bell, Bye. you'll get notifications when my videos will go up. Bye. Good night, guys. Leah says good night.